First, I want to thank Joe in Australia for sending us these strategy lessons. And Joe's pointed out that there are 20 basic checkmate methods in Xiangqi or Chinese chess. Today we're going to look at face-to-face -face laughing, which is based on the rule that kings can never look at each other directly along a file or a column. So the green king could not move in here into this E file if, the, if there were not another piece uh, in between the two, piece, the two kings. So what a player could do is position its king uh, strategically so that it acts as a rook with regard to the opponent's king and then just uh, bring in another piece. Now the green king is in check from this rook and it cannot escape by moving into the E column. And we could use uh, you know, other pieces to accomplish this, maybe the cannon. And here's the cannon mount over here. Again, it's checkmate. Or uh, perhaps we could see a different, here's a different uh, look, all right? The green king is in check from this red rook and it cannot block the attack with its guard because then it would be exposed. The two kings would be exposed. So this is me. Uh, here, here's another example. Maybe uh, the king cannot escape the attack from the red rook and it cannot capture this cannon to do that because again it would be facing the opponent, the red king. So these are all examples of the uh, simple but very important face-to-face -face laughing method. Here's another look at face-to-face -face laughing method for endgame strategy. It's red's turn and red will move the elephant over here to G5. This is a great move because it blocks the green rook from coming over here to the F file where it could protect its king. And it threatens mate by moving the rook over here that would be checkmate. So green responds by bringing back its rook to H9 where it's in a position to protect its king. So now red can't make this method by bringing the rook to F4. Instead it brings this rook all the way down here to E10. Check. Uh, the rook is protected by its king. So the king cannot, the green king cannot capture this red rook. It has to evade, check, by moving over here to F9. The red rook follows, and now we can see a position where when green king was out of the way, red can capture this rook, and then it'll be mate in two moves. Here we'll look at another example of using face-to-face -face laughing as endgame strategy. It's red's move. Red brings check by bringing the uh, rook to d7, green blocks it with the cannon. Now normally, red would not trade a rook for a cannon. A rook is a more valuable piece, but in this case it doesn't hesitate to do so. Why? Well, green's only response is to capture the rook, and now we're in a position red mates using the face-to-face -face laughing method. Green cannot escape check by moving into the E column. We'll take a look at double rook checkmate strategy. In this strategy, use two rooks to in turn check the opponent's king to the point uh, where it's checkmate. The important thing to remember is that the rook should be in different files, different columns, so that they don't become obstacles to each other. As you can see over here, the green has both rooks in the B file, so this is an obstacle, and um, they, be, they can't move around each other. So, very uh, simple to see, red brings this rook over here to I-10, king evades here, red brings this rook over here to F-9, king moves over here to F-8, and finally we have checkmate using double rooks endgame strategy. Here's another example of double rook endgame strategy. We can see red has both of its rooks in the same file, the C file, and we can't use this if we want to use double rook endgame uh, strategy. We don't want to check the green king this way. 
because the both rooks will still be in the same file and they'll become an impediment to each other. So instead we check the king this way, bringing the rook to d5. Green of eights, check, by moving over here to e10. Now red brings this rear rook over here to e1. And this is going to be very important in a moment. Okay, green checks the red king by moving this rook to i1. And here is the move. Red brings back its elephant to g1. It blocks this attack by green. Also at the same time it opens up this rook to attack the green king. And we can see green's only move over here to f10. Finally, red checkmates the king, the green king using this double rook strategy. Okay, let's take a final look at double rook endgame strategy. You can see the setup. Red rooks are in two different files. That's great. So let's be. Uh, let, let's see if we can find any problems or something we should be careful about. Red checks the green king, and the green king invades check by moving over here to d9. And so we might think, okay, let's bring this red rook over here and bring the king up like this. That's a mistake. We want to. Be careful because if we bring the, let the green king come over here to row 8, its cannon will provide protection. So the correct move after bringing the red rook over here to a10, green evades capture, comes over here to d9, we'll bring this rook over here, okay, to row 8 to prevent the king from coming into this row 8 where again the green cannon will be uh, will, will protect it. Also we have to be wary of this elephant, the green elephant can come over here and capture uh, at this point, A8. So let's see how green responds. Green would capture this guard and red would take the pawn and at this point Green would probably bring its rook over here to the D file, but it's too little too late because we can see double rook strategy. We'll bring this rook back here to A9. The king comes over here to D10, and finally it's mate.